The International Criminal Court is now in session. The International Criminal Court's trial chamber had convened a special status conference to deliberate on an application filed by two suspects, Uhuru Kenyatta and Francis Mudaura, seeking a fresh hearing at the pre-trial chamber due to what they argued were inconsistencies during the confirmation of their charges. Today I have filed with the trial chamber a notice withdrawing the case against Mr. Mudaura. But even better news awaited Mudaura, who was in the chambers at the hague -based court. ICC prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda told the trial chamber that it was no longer tenable to press charges against Mudaura. Madam President, we proceeded against Mr. Mudaura in good faith, believing that there was a case against him. However, it is our duty to pursue cases only when we believe that there is a reasonable prospect of conviction at trial. And a sigh of relief for the career civil servant, who through his team of lawyers led by Queen's counsel Karim Khan and Kennedy Ogeto, has always pleaded innocence over allegations of planning retaliatory attacks against perceived ODM supporters during the 2007-2008 post-election skirmishes. Although at trial stages of the proceedings, Madam President, we assessed the evidence as sufficient. We no longer do so today. I no longer believe that there is sufficient evidence to prove the charges against Mr. Muthaura beyond reasonable doubt. Withdrawal of Mudaura's charges was, according to Ben Suda, largely driven by insufficient evidence after her main witnesses died mysteriously. She also claimed that the Kenyan government had frustrated her efforts in building a strong case against Mudaura and the other three ICC suspects. It came to light after the confirmation hearing that a critical witness for the prosecution against Mr. Mudaura had recanted part of his incriminating evidence after receiving bribes. In the circumstances, we felt we could no longer present this witness as a reliable witness and dropped him from our witness list. Our investigations have continued until now to gather both inculpatory and exculpatory evidence, but have failed to strengthen the case against Mr. Muthaura. But for Mudaura's co-accused, President-elect Uhuru Kenyatta, the coast is not yet clear. And we are all keenly aware of the most recent political developments in Kenya. But these have not, Madam President, and cannot have a bearing on the decisions that I make as prosecutor. Trial Chamber's presiding judge Kuniko Ozaki raised questions on the potential impact of the prosecution's decision as well as the timing of the withdrawal. The chamber would like the prosecution to address the impact of the withdrawal on the charges against Mr. Kenyatta. Given that the accused are charged as indirect co-perpetrators. Co 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 ben Suda has until Friday to furnish the chamber that comprises judges Kuniko Ozaki Christian Weingate and Ebu Osuji with written submissions detailing the prosecution's plan of action in prosecuting Kenyatta. Uh, I'm Stephen Kay of Queen's Council representing President Kenyatta. Kenyatta's legal team, led by Queen's Council Stephen Kay, has until Wednesday next week to respond to the prosecutor's written submission. With his co-accused Mudaura now off the hook, Kenyatta will face the trial chamber alone on July 9th. Francis Gashori, Citizen Live at 9.